Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock of the Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We come to you on a week-to-week -week basis from Washington, D.C. in the United States as we look around the globe in 144 different nations looking for those thousand best practices, the technology, services, and products that are making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And as we have a planet of 9 billion people by 2038 and possibly 12 to 13 billion by the end of this century, how are we going to be able to take care of all these people on planet Earth? And that's what Emerald Planet's all about. We come to you looking at the solutions, the best practices from around the globe as we create the Emerald Planet. Hello, welcome to the Emerald Planet. We're making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And seeing the long-term impacts of climate change, Looking around the globe for the best practices, one of the things that's dramatically changing is the food that we eat. They're saying we're producing enough food for about 12 to 13 billion people, but we're wasting almost 50% of it in developing countries and maybe as much as 40% in the developed nations. But we want to move away from the traditional meat and other animal proteins into plant-based because that's much more kinder and gentler to the environment. And we have someone that's absolutely a specialist. I've uh, tasted a number of her meals through George Washington University Hospital and its uh, nutrition section. This is Granetta Coleman. She is a certified food for life instructor. So you get an uh, idea of exactly what she's doing, food for life instructor called The Rooted Dish. And it's going to be a little bit about her story now and then how she transitioned into a vegan lifestyle. Granetta, welcome to the Emerald Planet TV. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, we're glad you're here. And I must again say you're a fantastic cook and uh, I love your presentation with the taste of your foods. Tell us about The Rooted Dish. That's a very a unique name. I've not seen that by uh, anyone before. And then a little bit about Learn, Cook, Live. All right. Well, The Rooted Dish was a company I started to help teach people how to cook plant-based meals. So rooted as in plants and dish as in delicious. Fantastic. And I really believe that it, thanks. And I really believe that if you learn how to cook the right foods, you cook them, you can live your longest and best life. Well, and look, I like this mix, the learn, cook, and live. I think that's a very good uh, motto for all of us to live by. Uh, this is an absolutely fantastic photograph. You sent it to me, but I couldn't resist showing it. How does this fit into your learn, cook, live? So this is me um, when my daughter was three years old. So this is about nine years ago. And I was trying, I was struggling to lose the baby weight, which I, um, you know, many women have that mm -hmm. issue. And so before this, I had gone vegetarian and lost weight before. So I decided at this point to try to go vegetarian and lose the weight again. But at that time, a family member had just read the China study, which talked about how long people live on a vegan diet and that it's actually the best diet for longevity. So I decided to try a vegan diet as well, lost over 20 pounds, have kept it off all these years and actually have continued to lose weight. Um, and my family has a history of high, high blood pressure, heart disease and diabetes. So I was really interested in trying to prevent those things from happening to me. And, you know, at 52 years old, I am, you know, healthier, I believe, than I was when I was 30. I, and I was going to say, you're probably uh, stronger, have more endurance than many people at 30 years of age. And what are they saying now? The 50 should be the new 30 or something like that. So uh, congratulations on that. And of course, having your daughter be a part of that. Tell us a little bit about the makeup of the vegan diet and what do we need as humans 
to have an enriched life. Absolutely. So good to, good nutrition to me means that you're getting all of the components of nutrition. That includes carbohydrates for energy, fats for different processes in your body, protein, vitamins, and minerals. So that to me is what good nutrition is. And good nutrition also shouldn't lead to those diseases that I was so worried about. So it shouldn't lead to heart disease. It shouldn't lead to diabetes or high blood pressure or high cholesterol. Yeah, we evolved to be healthy human beings and have a vigorous life as I like to use. And so if we have the proper mix of these and from the proper sources, we're going to have that vigorous life. Uh, looking at this, and I know why you put this in here, but explain why you wanted to share that right before we get really into the food part of what we're discussing. Absolutely. So I wanted to share this picture because one of the things I love to do is ride my road bike. And at 50, I can ride, you know, go out and ride 20 miles if I want to. So a vegan diet doesn't prevent you from having the energy to do whatever you want to do. I don't want people to think that they're going to be listless, you know, listless people on this diet. And actually, uh, many uh, super uh, performing athletes are now moving to a vegan diet and find they have more endurance, uh, uh, less uh, impact from uh, both illness and injuries. So it's really interesting how this is now catching on, but it truly is better for the environment. We're gonna talk about that just a little bit, but no yes. to what and why? So no to meat, seafood, poultry, dairy, which includes cow's milk, cheese, and no to eggs. And this is because these uh, foods are very high in fat, they're very high in calories, they're high in cholesterol, um, all the things that either increase your weight or clog your arteries. They also lead to a lot of cancers. So it's important to keep these out of your diet. Now, this is a new food plate. And, uh, you know, when I attended your class down at George Washington University Hospital, I saw this really for the first time. Tell us how different this is and what we think of as the classical food plate that most people saw either in high school or at the doctor's office or uh, other places. Absolutely. So this is the power plate and it was developed by the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. And it was a way to visualize what you should be eating and what the new four plant-based food groups should be. And they are basically legumes, which include beans, peas, soy products, and uh, lentils. They are fruits, grains, and vegetables. Uh, it's a, and actually, it's very pretty laid out. I, I really enjoy this. We see this again. And uh, let's go, go through that. And we see everything, in essence, in the pot, ready to be prepared. Uh, so tell us about, again, that transition from the animal protein-based diet into this uh, new plant-based diet. Absolutely. Well, when you take these four food groups, you can combine them in a million different ways to make delicious dishes. For adults, it's important that you try to get two servings of legumes a day, three servings of fruit, four servings of whole grains, and five servings of vegetables. So when you look at this slide, you can say two, three, four, five. Mm, very easy to remember. And yeah. uh, this transition, I guess this is about uh, the cycle of life and also the cycle of eating. Why is it important that we really, and, and most people are not just gonna go, no pun intended, cold turkey, but they're gonna transition. How do you transition uh, from a more animal-based diet into one that's more plant-based. And I want to put in there trees as well for nuts yes. and many other uh, good, good food items. Yes. Well, it's really important. Most people do not go cold turkey. Um, they have to plan and they have to um, get a taste for this new food. And everybody is going to slip up. I slipped up. Um, at most people I know have been in a situation where they've had to eat something that wasn't on the power plate. And it's really important for people to understand that it's a cycle, it's a learning process, and they have to, you know, just be okay with having some slips. And I think the whole thing that you keep talking about in your class is that you just need to relax with it. Don't worry about it. 
Uh, but if you're halfway through the month and you need to have some type of animal protein that's being served by uh, grandma and grandpa or your aunt and uncle or your parents or whatever it is, it's okay. Go ahead, but just get back into the plant-based diet as soon as you can. But uh, don't stress over it. I believe that's what this cycle is all about, correct? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, be, be rational. Uh, yeah. Three-step meal plan. Tell us about that. So in that planning process, it's really great if you can use three steps to get you to a vegan meal plan. And those three steps include, number one, trying to identify any foods that you already eat that are vegetarian or vegan. So for me, I already ate oatmeal with fruit. I used to have blueberries or bananas on top of it. I already was having a fruit and vegetable smoothie. So like bananas, plant-based milk, um, some kind of leafy green like kale, blended up in a smoothie. And I was already eating salads. Most people already eat salad, some kind of salad. So those were gonna be three things on my meal plan that I could just use that I already ate. Now I wanna go back to, you, you said something intriguing and mm -hmm. I'm sure some people caught it, maybe not, the milk, plant-based milk. Now the dairy farmers, and I came out of that tradition myself, uh, saying it's not milk, uh, but you're here to attest that it is. But anyway, tell us about the plant-based milk and why that, why is that important? Absolutely. So milk has a lot, cow's milk or goat's milk, animal milk has a lot of fat in it. It also has a lot of hormones that actually cause cancer cells to grow. So you really want to try to eliminate the dairy from your diet if you can for longevity. So there are a plethora of plant-based milks on the market, anything from a soy milk to a hemp milk and almond milk, they all taste different. Everyone needs to find the plant-based milk that they enjoy if they want to use it. And it's really an easy step that you can make, you know, instead of having your oatmeal or your cereal with an animal-based milk, have a plant-based milk. Okay, great. And we're going to go through these. All right, step two. So step two, you identify three meals that you already eat that you want to turn into vegan meals. And for me, I used to eat a beef burger. So then I switched it to a black bean burger. I used to eat a meat sauce on pasta. I switched it to a pesto sauce without cheese. So the pesto sauce has fresh basil, fresh cilantro, garlic in it. You blend it up very quickly and have that on pasta. And then I used to eat a beef stew um, and I switched that to a portobello stew. So you have all those great vegetables that you always had in a beef stew, but instead of beef, you throw in some mushrooms. That's fantastic. Okay. Uh, we're about the end of our program and tell us about these books, why they're important. And then I have one last question, but we only have about 30 seconds to do all of this. All right. So these books are important because in step three, you want to identify some new recipes. So you can use books to do that. These are two books that I really like to do that. And then you make your meal plan. You decide on your breakfast, lunch, and dinner and snacks and you go for it. Where do you see uh, veganism going over the next five, 10 or 15 years? And you got about 15 seconds to do that. Well, the trend is definitely up. Everybody, is thinking about how to eat more healthy and tr and a lot of people are jumping on the vegan bandwagon so fantastic granetta coleman certified food for life instructor rooted dish thank you for being with us as we look around the globe to create the emerald planet We're going to be talking about plant-based power for life. I'm going to repeat that plant-based power for life. We don't normally think about plants and power. We think about plants and beauty and softness and uh, nature and going out and enjoy it. But plants really can be the engines for good health, for good nutrition, and also at the same time, a good environmental and a good planet. And we have Granetta Coleman. She's a certified food for life instructor of the Rooted Dish. And she's going to tell us about this plant-based power for health. And I just think this is fantastic, Granetta, that you've 
uh, have this theme, how does this fit into the vegan, the vegetarian of this plant-based power for health and power for life? Thank you for having me. And this theme is really near and dear to my heart because a lot of people in my family have suffered from chronic diseases um, that we all thought were the natural part of the aging process. And it turns out that plants and being plant-based can actually help you prevent or reverse a lot of chronic diseases. Now you're saying reverse chronic diseases. Now we have this very complex uh, chart here. Tell us what we're looking at. But when we summarize this image about this reversal of chronic diseases, let's talk a little bit about that. And then we'll go through uh, this whole plant-based power for health. All right. So before the 1990s, uh, one area, you see that artery that's clogged up. Um, before the 1990s, people didn't know that once you got, uh, once you, where people thought once you got coronary artery disease and your arteries got blocked up, uh, the only thing they could do for you was surgery. And it turns out that if you eat the right things, you may be able to reverse the blockages in your arteries. Um, similarly, with diabetes, people thought once you got diabetes, it would just progress and you, there's nothing you can do to reverse it. And it turns out that if you eat the right things, you may be able to reverse your diabetes. So there's a lot of chronic conditions um, that you might not have to get, or you might be able to reverse based on what you eat. Okay, we're looking at uh, some scales and a tape measure and other things here. Tell us how they fit into this plant-based power for health. So I just wanted to exemplify some of the conditions that um, what you eat can affect. And those are obesity, um, so your weight. They are diabetes, type two diabetes, um, high cholesterol, hypertension, which is high blood pressure. Both high cholesterol and hypertension can lead to heart disease and kidney disease. All of these things can be affected by what you eat. That's, that's amazing. Now, looking at the, the power plate and how all that fits in over on the right, looking into the screen, tell us how that relates directly back to the power plate that we're looking at here. So when you eat a plant based diet, you are not eating animal products. That means you're not eating meat. You're not eating seafood. You're not eating poultry. You're not eating any dairy products. So no cow's milk, no cheese, no cow's yogurt and you're not eating eggs. So people wonder, well, you took away everything. What am I supposed to eat? <laughs> and this power Absolutely. plate. Absolutely. Yeah. So this power plate shows you what you are actually can eat for health and for power. And that includes four food groups, the legumes, the fruits, the whole grains, and the vegetables. But to give it a little extra punch, it's healthful to limit your oils. So the other side of this um, slide shows the oils to avoid, even olive oil uh, or, or minimize olive oil, seeds and nuts and avocados are all things that if you minimize them, it can be helpful. Okay. Now 500 calories uh, and uh, tell us what this, uh, this little cartoon really is telling us and how we need to take it. No pun intended, take it to heart. Yes. Well, weight can be a gateway to other diseases. So if you become obese, there's a better chance that your blood pressure will go up. There's a better chance that you can develop type two diabetes. So you want to be full. And how do you fill your stomach and still lose weight or maintain a healthy weight? The way is to eat fruits and vegetables. So you will see the fruits and vegetables, if you eat 500 calories of them, your stomach will be completely full. There's a little red line there. The fruits and vegetables have filled your entire stomach. If you eat grains and beans, you'll be three quarters full. If you eat meat, your stomach will only be half full on the same amount of calories. So you're probably gonna wanna eat again. If you eat cheese, like two slices of cheese pizza, you will, you will will your stomach may be only three quarters full, but you've used up your whole 500 calories. Mm -hmm. And if you have a little bit of oil, it actually, um, 
doesn't fill you up very much, but it takes up all those calories. So you will lose more weight and feel full if you eat plant foods. Okay, let's go back to the first two on the right, uh, fruit and vegetables, grains and beans. Now this is actually, I eat almost exclusively out of these two areas. So how do I fill my tummy? Make sure that I feel very full and relaxed, but yet have everything that I need using these, if I can use this, these two uh, food groups. Well, the beauty of it is, is if you eat a plant-based diet, you do not actually have to count calories. I only showed this to show you why in your mind, you may wonder why I can eat an entire plate of fruits, vegetables, grains, and legumes and still lose weight or maintain your weight. Um, so what you wanna do is you just create meals using these four foods and you eat them mm -hmm. and eat as much as you want until you're full and you will you should be able to maintain a healthy weight or lose weight so if i have the the beans and the grains and mix that with the, the fruit and vegetables it really i can eat just about what i want and how i want it as long as i'm using those again uh, this may be a gross exaggeration but these these two main food groups Exactly. And as long as you keep the oils low, if, if you fry your fruits and vegetables, if you saute your grains and beans in too much oil, you're going to, you know, you're not going to have the same result. So you really want to try to also keep those lo oils low. Yeah. I use no oils, no salt, no sugar, uh, no MSG, you know, a lot of things I've just eliminated, no extra water. Uh, but I do eat out of these first two food groups. And now uh, you, you sent this over to me. I'm not sure exactly what this is all about. <laughs> well, this one I sent to you because a lot of people don't know that diabetes is less related to sugar as the primary cause as it is to fat. So this slide is showing you that when you're, when your cells get clogged up and gummed up with fat, mm -hmm your insulin cannot work to get the glucose into your cells to use it. So the glucose hangs out in your blood and you develop diabetes, type two diabetes. So when, so if you eliminate animal fat and you eliminate those excess oils, you can get that gummy oil out of your cells and you may be able to reverse your diabetes or significantly decrease your need for medication. That is fantastic. Wow. That that's worth the whole conversation we're having today right there for uh, many of the viewers that we have both in the United States and around the globe, because people are becoming more obese everywhere on the planet, uh, not just in, uh, you know, the very developed nations, but even uh, your emerging economy nations, more and more people are becoming obese. Now, plant-based uh, diet, clean out your cells. You talked a little bit about that. What else is going on? Uh, in those first two areas we talked about, the grains and beans and the, the fruits and vegetables. So in addition, so as I said before about removing the fats from your cells, also when you're eating uh, grains, beans, fruits and vegetables, you are filling your body up with antioxidants. And what those do is they protect your cells from damage. They protect your cells from damage from the sun, they protect your cells from damage from toxins or even the development of cancer. So a really important um, aspect of eating these plants, these power foods, is it provides you with this great protection. That's absolutely incredible. Diabetes, prediabetes. This is a sobering thought right here. Yes. And this, these statistics for the U.S., 34 million people have diabetes. 88 million have prediabetes and many of them do not even know it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's a tsunami of poor health that is coming down the pike. And worldwide, the number of people, according to the World Health Organization, that have diabetes is 400 million. Yeah, so, this, is, this is incredible numbers because you look at this, this is not quite, but almost half of the entire population of the United States. It's not pretty. And a lot of these, a lot of these um, people are going to be children. Mm, my goodness. Yeah. And you're seeing it uh, when you're on the bus or in the subway, you're driving down the road. I mean, you just see it. Okay. Uh, you got this juxtaposition here. Why? 
So cholesterol is one of the main reasons why your arteries get clogged and that can lead to heart disease and heart attacks. So you look at, look at the meat on the slide and you think, oh, is the white marbling, is that the cholesterol? It is not, that is the fat, that's the saturated fat. And you can carve that off, but the cholesterol is actually inside the cells of the meat and you can't see it. Mm -hmm. So even if you get a lean cut of meat, you're still gonna get cholesterol that clogs your arteries. The beauty part of plants is it doesn't have any cholesterol. So the easiest way to lower your cholesterol, lower your risk of heart disease from that aspect is to eat plants and eliminate the meat. Going back to these clogged arteries, uh, let's go over that uh, again. So I said in the 1990s, Dr. Dean Ornish did a study where he had people who literally had no other hope because their arteries were so clogged. He took pictures of their arteries and they were clogged like these in this slide. He put them on a vegetarian diet with no smoking, minimal exercise and meditation and their arteries unclogged in 82% of the, the patients in the study. 82%, that is absolutely incredible. Uh, yeah. uh, soluble fiber, tell us about that. And we're just about running out of time. Uh, okay. So let's go on. Let's use this. Well, I'll just go through the, the images. What do you see for the need for people to be moving into this uh, plant-based power for health to save humanity, but also save the planet? You've got about 20 seconds. Well, not only, well, as you've seen before, not only are plants good for our bodies, but they are good for the planet because they use less resources, they create less um, carbon emissions, and it can actually be delicious. So here's a variety of different dishes that you can eat plant-based and enjoy your life and live a long, healthy life. Yeah, and, and as I can attest, the food that you make is absolutely delicious, uh, great recipes, and uh, thank you to The Rooted Dish and uh, Granetta Coleman for being with us as we create the Emerald Planet. Thank you. Looking at food and children, something that's very important Many uh, parents are in busy lives. Uh, they want prepared meals. Uh, they want to buy prepared foods, get it to the kids, let them have it, keep them quiet. At the same time, we may or may not be giving them the best food possible. And the more processed it is, possibly the less nutritious that it is. And we're going to be talking about that with Granetta Coleman. She's a certified food for life instructor of uh, the Rooted Dish. And we're going to be talking about raising vegan and vegetarian kids. And Granada, looking at this uh, Learn, Cook, Live, uh, and we had in 4-H, you are what you eat, food is medicine. Take those last two things. We are what we eat, food is medicine. How does that relate to vegan and vegetarian meals? and raising the children on that? Well, you definitely are what you eat. If you eat animal products, you're probably gonna find that when you get older, you're gonna have diseases like heart disease, diabetes, high cholesterol. If you eat a plant-based um, vegan or vegetarian um, diet, you have a better chance of growing up healthy and not having those diseases and living a longer life. So it's really important to teach them young what the healthy foods are so that they can live as long as possible. Yeah, I think that's absolutely fantastic. Looking at raising uh, vegan and vegetarian kids, many people say, well, we need milk, we gotta have butter and cheeses, all these other types of things uh, so that they'll be healthy. And then when they get in their teen years or go off to university or college and uh, become adults, then they can decide which way they want to go. But you really say that the children need to be raised in essence from babyhood on. Why is that the fact? Well, it's really important, first of all, because tastes are developed young. 
So whatever they have when they're young is probably going to be the taste they're going to want to have when they're older. So if you encourage them to eat more fruits, vegetables, greens, and whole grains when they're young, they're probably going to prefer those foods when they're older. Even if they have a period where they switch off, um, they'll probably come back to their childhood favorites, right? Um, and it's perfectly healthy for kids to be vegan and vegetarian. There's a, here's an example of a nutrition guide for kids that PCRM.org, um, you can download it for free. And then that's a picture of my daughter actually doing a high ropes course. Um, she has all the strength that she needs to live an active, healthy, you know, child, childhood. Yeah, and she's uh, she's been raised literally on a vegan diet. But looking at this nutrition for kids uh, over here, so this is really a cute way then to introduce them uh, to this type of lifestyle and uh, food and the taste, correct? Absolutely. This guide not only teaches the parents what is important about a plant-based lifestyle, but it also has great recipes um, that your kids can enjoy. So it's a good start. Yeah, probably a good start for uh, many adults too. Going back to this power plate, this we've seen this before, but tell us again how this is important to start, start sharing this with children at a very young age and let them know why it's important to have this type of power plate and maybe not the one that they're seeing when they're visiting the neighbors or even at school. Well, first of all, kids are very, very intuitive and we read them books about animals being their friends. And when you finally connect the dots and they find out that, you know, the pig that they loved in the book is the bacon that they're eating on the plate, a lot of them are not interested anymore. When they figure out that the meat is the animal, <laughs> you know, they make that connection. They don't want to eat it anymore. So this power plate shows them what they can eat that will not harm the animals that they have fallen in love with, that we've taught them to fall in love with. Um, and it's also healthier for them. And they're open to those messages of health as well. I think it's just absolutely fantastic. Okay, let's get into this. You're going to show us some lovely photographs of some of the things that you put together. So uh, let's just go through this healthy diet that we're having and raising vegan and vegetarian kids. Absolutely. So the first and easiest um, meal that kids love is fruit. If you cut up fruit for kids or you present it to them, they, they literally could eat you out of house and home with mm -hmm. some fruit. So it's the, one of the easiest um, power plate sections to get kids to eat because it's sweet. Whole grains. Next, yeah. Yeah. So the next one is whole grains and you know, you can have feed your kids whole grain pasta. You can feed them rolled oats, you know, for breakfast or for a snack. It's a great nutritious snack and you can feed them whole grains in the form of brown rice or barley or quinoa. All of those are very easy to cook and your kids will enjoy them. Now, uh, going to this may seem like a, a childish question, uh, but when you look the two on the right as we're looking at the screen, as far as the whole grain pasta uh, and then the, the rolled oats and all that, it looks just like uh, the white uh, products that we normally be eating. So what is the resistance that some people have visually to changing over to this vegan or vegetarian diet when it quite honestly looks just like what they're already eating. I think the resistance is that, you know, we're all raised a certain way. So whatever we ate as children is what we typically continue to eat and feed our children. So I think the resistance is just not knowing, first of all, how easy it is to make the switch and how important it is to make the switch. And once you make that connection, and then you, you, when you're in the grocery store, you just look a little to the left and you find the right thing. It's, mm. it's not as complicated as people think it might be. So what we need to do then is we really need to, to learn about and understand the food that we're buying in the stores and make sure that it really meets this uh, vegan vegetarian uh, standard, but, but also realize it has much less of what we shouldn't be eating and has much more of what we should be eating. Is that a simple way to describe this? That is exactly it. And that is the learn and the learn cook live. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Vegetables. I love vegetables. And I want you to know, Renata, even before your class, 
Uh, if I go through a day and I haven't had at least two, usually I try to have three servings of vegetables, my body just screams veggies, 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 literally. And then I have to go get some. Absolutely. Once you switch over to this lifestyle, your body will crave the foods that it needs and the vitamins and minerals it needs. And vegetables are so, um, there's so much variety. You should be able to find some that your kids enjoy. What are we seeing here? People say, oh, that's veg vegetables. It's, there's no protein. There's no carbohydrates. What are we looking at here as this mix? And why is it so important in the mix that we're seeing to have these vegetables? Well, one of the most important things that vegetables can give you is fiber. And fiber can play two roles in your body. It can fill up your stomach so you're not hungry. And it can also help you have good digestion, good elimination of waste products. Mm -hmm. So if you're not eating enough fiber and a lot of kids suffer from constipation, I, you know, I've raised my daughter to know that, you know, if you don't eat your vegetables, <laughs> you know, it's not going to come out, you know, you're going to, your belly's going to hurt. So they can understand that. And they're like, give me that broccoli so that I can, you know, have a nice smooth life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, yeah. And so vegetables, in addition to fiber, they also have beautiful colors, which each of those colors mean a different vitamin or antioxidant. Mm -hmm. So that's protection for your cells. So you want to encourage your kids to eat a broad, you know, a broad rainbow of colors so that they get a lot of different protection from their vegetables. That's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. I really wanted to hit those key points and you did it perfectly. Uh, going to uh, beans. Now, uh, ligums, I know that mushrooms are not part of that, but I haven't seen any mushrooms. Where do mushrooms fit into all this? And I know we're going to talk about legumes right now, but how do mushrooms fit into this whole diet? So mushrooms would be back in the vegetable section. They'd be sitting on top of that big pile of beautiful vegetables. Yeah. And mushrooms are great. A lot of kids may not be as interested in mushrooms unless you've chop them up very fine because they have a particular texture of, you know, maybe softer that they don't enjoy. So you may have to hide the mushrooms under some rice. Um, but mushrooms are great because they have a lot of antioxidants and they also give you a chewy texture, which, um, you know, some, some kids may miss. And I didn't realize and mushrooms are so uh, high in protein, but I went to the International Mushroom museum and a little south of Taipei, Taiwan. And I learned a lot more about mushrooms than I ever knew. I always, we love, we always had mushrooms in our house. We had it with many meals, uh, but I didn't realize how important they are. But legumes, tell us about those and why they're so important. So legumes are important because they are a key source of protein. And you want to make sure that your children are getting the right amounts of, uh, right amount of protein. Uh, so legumes are a great source that would include any kind of bean, any kind of lentil and any kind of pea. And it also includes soy products. And particularly for girls, research has come out that it's very important for pre-adolescent girls to get a serving of soy a day to protect against breast cancer. That's incredible. I haven't heard that before. Can you uh, say that one more time? It's important for pre-adolescent girls mm -hmm. to get a serving of soy every day. So that could be in the form of soy milk. It could be in the form of tofu or endamame or tempeh. Um, and to make it fun for kids, you know, you can make a soy milk hot chocolate. You okay. can make a soy milk um, cold chocolate. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. <laughs> okay, now the master chef. So one way to get kids to eat these vegetables is to let them help you cook the vegetables. So, you know, my daughter has been cooking since she was little. I got this little stand that she could get in and mash up the sweet potatoes for me. Now going over these foods just, and we're just about out of time. So just tell us what we're looking at here, the mix that we're seeing on the table. Yep. So another way to get kids to eat is to present things in a bar style. So that means you don't combine everything together. They get to pick what they want. So this is a falafel bar. Those are chickpea fritters, tofu marinated to taste like feta, some uh, uh, tomatoes, some cabbage, and some bread to wrap it in and hummus. This is absolutely beautiful. Go ahead. 
This is Ethiopian food. So international food can be a great source for kids. These are spiced lentils, some collard greens. They're injera, which is teft wheat bread and some potatoes and tomatoes. And you'd be surprised if you let kids try things, you'd be surprised what they might enjoy. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have the, uh, the fruit and vegetables and we're going to go off of that. But uh, what do you see uh, people moving to for vegan and vegetarian meals for kids? We got about 10 seconds to do that. So I think it's really important to just try to encourage your kids to eat from that power plate. And, you know, you can veganize anything, you know, a burger, pancakes, they can all be switched over to plant-based meals. Granetta Coleman, The Rooted Dish, thank you very much as we create the Emerald Planet. Thank you. Looking at the vegetarian and vegan meals, it's one way, as we say, to increase longevity and life. The other is to protect Mother Earth and the environment. And we have someone here that's going to be teaching us about this, why these two things uh, go hand in hand, uh, balance the Earth, balance humanity and all living beings. This is Granetta Coleman. She's a certified food for life instructor of Rooted Dish. And uh, we're going to be talking about the grain train. And I'm very interested to see this. Uh, Granetta, welcome. And uh, again, going to this learn, cook, live, you came up with this motto. Uh, tell us what that means and why those three words put together. Well, thank you for having me here. This is really fun. And the reason why I put learn, cook, live together is because I want people to learn the right foods to eat, to live a healthy, long life. I want them to cook those foods because when you cook your own food, you control your health. Mm -hmm. And I, then I want you to just go out and live, do what you love to do, be with your grandchildren, you know, go for a bike ride, play with your kids, have fun with your friends. But the whole thing about it, I think this is comes out in the class that we uh, are in together down at George Washington University Hospital is that people should really have a medicine or pharmaceutical free life as well. So it goes back to that. What I learned in 4-H is food is medicine. You are what you eat. How does that fit into this learn, cook, live? Absolutely. Well, it fits in because when you eat the right foods, your body is healthy. And when you eat the wrong foods, your body becomes sick and you actually have to go to pharmaceuticals to try to help unclog your arteries or lower your blood pressure. So if you eat the right things, you won't eat that. Now looking at this power plate, you called it power plate. Why, why call it that? It's called the power plate because if you eat these foods, you will have health power, you will have brain power, you will have actual physical power. And this is a plant-based um, meal plan. So you need all these four foods. You need legumes, you need fruits, you need whole grains, and you need vegetables. Yeah, but I don't see any meat or any animal proteins in here. So how am I going to switch, particularly being in America or most of the world, uh, a lot of our foods are based on animal proteins and carbohydrates and all the other uh, mixtures that we need. But you're here to attest that if we do the fruits, the grains, the vegetables and legumes, uh, we have everything we need. Absolutely. You can get a balanced, healthy uh, diet from plants and it's called a vegan diet. And a lot of people are finding that this is the way that they're going to live longer. This is the way that they're going to live without medications. And this is the way that they're going to, you know, help their children live longer. We are the first generation where some of our, our kids are developing diseases that they shouldn't have until they're older or shouldn't have at all. No, you shouldn't have at all. I was going to say the grain train. What is the grain train? So the grain train, I actually wanted to help explain what nutritious whole grains are. And basically this grain train shows you that the first four sections of the train are green. That means green for eat as many of these as you want. 
the next three sections of the train are orange, which means eat them sparingly. And the last, last uh, car on the grain train is the caboose. It has very little nutritional value and it's red for don't eat these foods if you can help it. Mm -hmm. Or the absolute minimum. Minimum, yes, yes. Okay, let's go into the green side of the train. So the green side of the train is the most nutritious. The very front of the train is the engine. That's where you're gonna get your most nutritious grains. They are intact whole grains. I'll get into specifics later. Okay. The next are cut whole grains, then rolled whole grains, and then shredded. Now we're gonna see some of these beautiful foods and I've uh, actually tasted quite a few of the ones that we're gonna be seeing. So I want to attest they actually taste good. Besides they're just, pretty. Yes. So the intact whole grains include anything from brown rice to wild rice. They include the barley that's in this salad. They include quinoa that is made into taste just like stuffing for Thanksgiving. We did that in class one time. And so these are the most nutritious grains. You should eat the most of these. When you say intact, what does the intact actually mean? So the intact means the farmer harvests the grain, the wheat plant or whatever it is, wheat, barley, rice, they harvest it and they basically just um, clean it mm -hmm. and then they package it. So they really haven't added anything like fat or sugar or salt and they haven't taken anything away like stripping away the brand. Okay, great. All right, let's go to these. So the next three sections of the grain train are your cut grains, which include what I'm showing is uh, barley, I'm sorry, bulgur. They include steel cut oats. So those are cut grains. And then your classic old fashioned rolled oats, which make delicious oatmeal or cookies are, are the rolled grains. And then shredded grains are usually like a shredded puff that you would have as cereal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it's interesting you have the shredded in here. I've never even thought of that cut and rolled. Yes, I've never thought of the shredded as being part of the green uh, in the train. Are these made in a similar way so that's less processing, less additives in uh, the shredded? Yes, you have mm -hmm. to read the package because if the package, the shredded could be shredded and there could be sugar and salt added or they could be shredded and there could be nothing added. So when you eat those, you wanna definitely read the label on the package. Got it, okay. All right, now we're in the orange section. So, woo, I'm not sure we really wanna be here, but probably some decent food here. Tell us about it. Well, the orange section is where most people want to hang out on the grain train because the ground grains are actually anything made out of flour. Um, and then you have the flaked grains and the puffed grains. And I'll show you examples of all of these, but you want to eat these sparingly. Okay. All right. Okay. So the ground grains include anything, those I'm showing you a vegan waffle made out of whole wheat flour. The noodles in that jar salad are soba noodles. So they're made out of a ground buckwheat. And then this is a vegan pizza made out of whole wheat flour crust with some seitan sausage and red peppers and nutritional yeast sprinkled on top. Now you said something about sausage. I thought we gotten away from the animal proteins. Well, this is seitan sausage. So it's oh, actually made from flour. Okay. Yeah. All right. And it's meat free. Okay, great. I knew that, but I thought I'd better bring this out for our guests to, so they'll know what Absolutely. we're really talking about. So, <clears throat> and then to the flake. So the flake grain, yeah. So the flake grains are, you know, bran flake cereal is a great example. And you, again, just like the shredded, you need to make sure that there hasn't been a whole lot of salt or sugar or fat added into them somehow. <laughs> I want to go back to this and then uh, forward here. Uh, looking at the ground and then also the flaked, uh, what puts it into the orange section of the train? Why is it not part of the green section? So the further you get towards, the, the closer you get to the caboose, 
-hmm. the more processed the food is. So instead of just cleaning the grain and packaging it, they have done a lot to these grains. And every time you cut it, every time you do an additional process to it, you lose nutrition. So it actually comes out in the processing then, the actual nutrients. So it could be the fiber, it could be amino acids, could be even vitamins and minerals that actually are being exactly. leached out of the out of the grains. Exactly. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Puffed. Why is that so bad? Because you think that's just a lot of air put into it. Well, I mean, it's been processed a lot. I don't know how they puff these things up, but they remove a lot of good things when they do. And because they're so light, you can almost tell if you hold a hold a handful of rice in your hand and then you hold a handful of puff rice, they're light, the puffs are lighter. So there's something missing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, now getting to refined grains, tell us about that. Uh, oh, the caboose, you wanna try and stay away from the caboose. <laughs> so refined grains are made out of white products. So they've taken whole grain flour and they've stripped away the nutrition. And so these are the things that a lot of people eat before they know how to get off of the caboose. So it would be white pasta, white flour. And so these products, the croissants, the muffins, the white pasta, those have all been made out of refined flour. Now you're taking and away, also, all, you're taking away all the fun things to eat though. So uh, how, let's, let's, if, can we leave up the red caboose for just a minute? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what can we substitute out of this? So we're getting now to the orange and maybe even into the green area, but still have something that looks like this and may have similar taste. Well, you can absolutely transition from a white flour to a wheat flour. So you can switch from white pasta to wheat pasta. You can switch from a animal-based muffin to a wheat muffin. So that will at least move you into the orange section. Mm -hmm. You can transition from a, a refined croissant to a whole wheat croissant. I've never had one, but I'm sure someone is making them somewhere. <laughs> um, and that at least would get you into the orange section. But then you still want to try to get as many meals as you can in the green section. Right. Right. Now, looking at this pasta, we had uh, some uh, green uh, pasta that was uh, made out of uh, uh, vegetables, and then we're going to go away from that. But I, I like this image. Uh, would that take us into the green or would that be into the, uh, the orange section if we're making it out of carrots or, uh, you know, some kind of green plant that's fresh? and you bring it in and then somehow you turn it into a noodle, which we actually had in our class. Yes, yes. So if you actually take a noodle, if you take a zucchini and you cut it into a spiral, to spiralized noodles, which are very popular right now, mm -hmm. now, not even on the grain train, power plate, you're in the vision, great as well. Okay, that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, refined grains, uh, we're going to go out on this. We, uh, we understand about that. Uh, but staying away from these refined grains, how does that help our health? So actually, it looks like the heading on this one was shifted. Uh, these are actually made of whole grains. Oh, these are whole grains. So, uh, um, yeah, these are whole grain examples. So okay. tortilla chips made out of corn. Mm -hmm. uh, brown rice that is paired with uh, sauteed vegetables and tofu. Um, and then there was the barley salad. And I think the last slide was a quinoa cake. Quinoa, mm -hmm. form it into a patty and uh, saute it with some cooking spray and mm -hmm. turn that into a quinoa cake. Okay, fantastic. This is Gordana Coleman of Rooted Dish. Thank you for being with us as we create the Emerald Planet. <music>